May 9th, 2022. Habcast 294. Episode 294. Let's go. Of course, I have a few things to share with you guys. An evening of reflection. Shall we? Escaped Alabama inmate and officer are caught after crash, officials say. That didn't take long at all. In the grand scheme of things, if this was a so-called manhunt, that would be considered a short stay, which didn't last until checkout time. A manhunt for a corrections officer who disappeared last month with an inmate accused of murder in Alabama ended Monday with the two in custody after a police pursuit resulted in a crash in Indiana, authorities said. The officer, Vicki White, had been on the run, former officer, because they fired her, on the run with the inmate Casey White since April 29th when they left the Lauderdale County Jail in Florence, Alabama for a courthouse appointment that was later revealed to be a fabrication. I think that was her very first red flag when she was supposed to be transporting this guy and didn't make that first check-in. The two who are not related had last been seen on that day in Rogersville, Alabama, about 24 miles east of Florence. Marty Keeley, the U.S. Marshal for the Northern District of Alabama, said on May 2nd, they were seen in what was described as a gold or copper colored Ford SUV with Alabama plates. A vehicle the authorities said the pair abandoned along a rural road in Williamson County, Tennessee, the same day they escaped. They were just having a road trip. <laughs> the Ford was with absolutely nowhere to go. The Ford was found on May 6th, abandoned with paint buckets inside, said Sheriff Rick Singleton of Lauderdale County. The pair had probably tried to disguise it with house paint. He <laughs> what? Wait a minute. <laughs> but they didn't do a very good job of it. Great police work. Officer White's patrol vehicle had been left at Florence Square Shopping Center where the pair had switched vehicles, Sheriff Singleton said. The way this was being portrayed as some well-thought-out, romanticized prison break, it wasn't that well-thought-out. Officer White disappeared with Mr. White on the morning of April 29th after she left the jail under the pretext of escorting them to the county courthouse a few blocks away for a mental health evaluation. She told a booking officer at the jail that after dropping off Mr. White, she intended to seek medical assistance for herself. That did not happen, Sheriff Singleton said at a news conference on May 1st. The permits for leaving the jail was all bogus. He said the disappearance was not noticed until about six hours after the officer and the inmate had left, according to Lauderdale County Sheriff's Office, which is a total lapse in communication because in the event that this woman wasn't privy to the escape of this inmate. Her checking in every 30 minutes, 45 minutes, hour, whatever it is, would have been crucial to saving this woman's life. He was up for murder. Let's not forget a capital murder. Miss White stayed at a quality inn in Florence, Alabama, only the finest of accommodations on the two nights leading up to her disappearance. According to video footage, the sheriff's office released on May 7th, we don't know exactly why she stayed out there, Sheriff Singleton said, adding maybe she didn't want to face her family that morning, knowing what she was seeking to do. Sheriff Singleton said the authorities knew for sure that Officer White had helped Mr. White flee the jail, though he said she might have been coerced or threatened into doing so. As the jail's assistant director of corrections, it's the second highest ranking officer. She was responsible for handling transportation for inmate appearances in court. It seems like once the authorities found out that she wasn't necessarily a victim, the ball got rolling pretty fast on catching up to him. An arrest warrant was issued for her on a charge of permitting or facilitating an escape. A week later, charges of forgery and identity theft were added, stemming from the use of an alias to purchase the Ford SUV. The sheriff's office said Mr. White, 38, was charged in 2020 with two counts of murder in the fatal stabbing of a woman in 2015, 
according to the U.S. Marshal Service, which described them as approximately six foot nine and weighing about 330 pounds. Mr. White had already been serving a 75 year sentence for previous convictions, including two carjackings and multiple shootings. He was awaiting trial in the 2015 murder. What's puzzling about this is this woman was looking forward to retirement. She had that much time in, and she basically just threw it all away for what could have been a few conjugal visits. A lawyer for Mr. White declined to comment. The Lauderdale County Sheriff's Office said in a statement that investigators had determined through interviews with inmates that Officer White and Mr. White were in a special relationship. <laughs> Sheriff Singleton in the news conference said, it's obviously a jailhouse romance or something you don't know about love. Sheriff Singleton told NBC's Today Show on May 5th that Officer White and Mr. White had been in a relationship for at least two years and that the two had been in contact by phone when Mr. White was an inmate at a state prison in Donaldson, Alabama. The sheriff's office said in a statement on May 4th that Officer White was no longer employed by the office. She had recently decided to retire and the escape occurred on her last day of work. Sheriff Singleton said that it was unusual for someone her age, 56, to retire four years before her retirement benefits would become available. Wow. So she basically just threw it all away because this guy is not going anywhere. <laughs> she could have waited the four years, retired, and when she's no longer an employee, she could have continued a long-distance relationship. And who knows? She knows a few people in the department. She knows a few people in the precinct. She could have arranged a couple extra visits to go see the guy. Her mother, Pat Davis, said in an interview with WAAY Way TV <laughs> that Officer White never spoke of retirement, though she'd recently sold her house and moved in with Ms. Davis. Nobody saw this coming, Sheriff Singleton said, emphasizing Sheriff White's reputation as a respected colleague and a four-time recipient of the Jails Employee of the Year honor. This is pure speculation on my part, but you don't work at a jail and become Employee of the Year four times without making working at a jail the main part of your life with nothing, with no type of social outlets. So maybe this guy gave her some type of attention that she wasn't getting, that she didn't have time to get when she was outside of her job because she was never outside of her job. At the time of the disappearance, Officer White was armed with a nine millimeter handgun. The U.S. Marshal Service warned that she and Mr. White might have been armed with a shotgun and an AR-15 style rifle. Going out, Bonnie and Clyde, yeah? No, I'm coming out with my hands up. On Wednesday, the Marshal Service said in a statement that Mr. White had threatened a former girlfriend and her sister warning that he would kill them if he ever got out of prison. Oh, the Marshal Service and Alabama authorities have been in touch with the sisters to advise them of the threats and the escape and have taken steps to protect them, the statement said. Bronx woman falsely arrested for a planet gun in retaliation for filming NYPD cops. Only an NYPD officer would do a cliche horrible cop movie move and plant a gun on someone. A young Bronx woman says NYPD cops got angry when she filmed them arresting her cousin, so they slapped her in cuffs on bogus gun possession charges. Anais Pagan alleges in court papers filed last month in Bronx Supreme Court that cops set her up when she was an 18-year-old high school senior. So that's how you honor the badge by roughing up a little girl? Mighty fine police work. I feel like you can never recover from a situation like this. Because once it's happened, you always have that thought in the back of your mind. And I think that's part of why police do that also, said Pagan, now 22 and working at Target and as a home care aide. Like, what if this happens again? There's cops outside right now. What if I go outside and they stop me? Surveillance video turned over through the wrongful arrest lawsuit shows Pagan never had a gun. Her attorney, Neil Wollerstein writes in the April 26 filing, the 22 caliber handgun police said she possessed was found to have neither her fingerprints nor DNA on it. He also noted NYPD detective Richard Cleary 
who said in court papers he saw the gun drop from Pagan's waistband on February 8, 2019, has been found by judges in two separate cases to have given unreliable testimony. Oh, one of those guys that will say anything to make it stick, even if it's not necessarily the truth. Wallerstein told the Daily News his client's arrest was a classic case of planet evidence, no doubt about it. In other words, cut the check. The suit filed in June 2020 has been delayed by the pandemic and city attorney's failure to comply with court deadlines. Judge Mitchell Danzinger slapped the city with sanctions and a $2,000 fine in February for a repeated failure to comply with this court's order filing show. He's not giving out contempt of court charges because that definitely sounds like they're blatantly committing contempt of court and hiding behind the pandemic to do it. Last month, Wallerstein submitted a motion for grand jury minutes to determine if any of the officers involved in the arrest lied under oath. The motion includes, we know they did, the motion includes a detailed rundown of questions surrounding the case. Pagan had never been arrested before the encounter with cops on Fulton Ave near East 173rd Street in Claremont. She says the ordeal began when she recorded police arresting her cousin, Joshua Freeman, for possession of a gravity knife and marijuana. I wanted to record not only for my protection, for his protection as well. She said the police, they have bad tendency of putting their hands on people. So for our protection, I wanted to record the cops got angry. Follow a proper procedure and people won't feel like they have to do this at Pagan and put her in handcuffs. She recalled a criminal complaint alleged that she adjusted her waistband as cops approached when an officer tried to stop her. A 22 caliber gun fell from her waistband to the sidewalk. The complaint states she was charged with criminal possession of a firearm, which carries a maximum of four years in prison. Video of Pagan's arrest show she never dropped anything that appears to be a gun. Wallerstein writes, the video does not depict any officer bending down to retrieve anything from the sidewalk. Cops claim in court papers a confidential informant told them Pagan had a gun. Who? Prompting the arrest, Pagan had to show up to court roughly 12 times before the charges were dismissed nearly a year later. She missed so much school she graduated late. The charges were also dismissed against Pagan's cousin who sued and settled for $30,000, said Wallerstein. Smart on her behalf for not missing one court date because one court date, they probably would have tried to make her look guilty, would have put out a warrant for arrest and all types of bullshit. The NYPD doesn't comment on cases with pending litigation, and it refused to answer any questions about the incident or about Clary, the city has denied wrongdoing in the case. Four Tennessee daycare workers arrested after allegedly dosing children with melatonin to get them to sleep. <laughs> How between the four, y'all, you fuck up nap time? How does anyone fuck up nap time? Four Tennessee daycare workers, including the owner, were accused of giving melatonin to more than two dozen children in order to get them to sleep longer. TV station WZTV reported on May 5th, the Stewart County Sheriff's Office arrested Jamie Clark, Kristen Clark, Jordan Darnell, and Ethan Pulley on various charges ranging from child abuse and neglect to contributing to a minor, according to online jail records. An investigation was opened at Mimi's daycare in Indian Mound, Tennessee, after a complaint was filed on March 25th, according to a press release obtained by a TV station WKRN, when they would pick them up, they would sleep all the way home and sometimes reports of children staying up most of the night so their sleeping habits are off. Investigator Dana Saltkill told TV station WSMV they also made some disclosures that there was melatonin going on at lunchtime at the daycare center. Each of the women, Jamie, Kristen, and Darnell, were charged with one count of abuse and neglect, among other charges, with at least $60,000 bond. Pulley was charged with one count of fabricating, tampering with evidence, 
and his bond was set at $10,000. It was unclear whether anyone has obtained a lawyer. Candace Short, a mother who started working at the daycare after she quit her previous job. That's a little bit of backstory there. I don't think we needed that, but okay, told WSMV that she and a handful of other parents filed complaints against the daycare. I witnessed them giving melatonin to the children. Short said, shock is like I don't even know because it's more than shock. It's literally devastation. Parent Kimberly Bergstrom told the station her children didn't want to sleep when they were home. <laughs> Easy money at that daycare center because anything after breakfast, the kids are probably knocked out all day. <laughs> And then go home and be on Super Saiyan Blue all night, hearing that she gave them anything. I would have taken my kids out. I would have been distraught, Bergstrom said. But hearing the amount she gave them, I can't even believe she's a mother. How much did she, How much does it take? Investigators allege the workers gave children, including infants, about double the average dose. Whoa! Detective Lee Miller said officials believe about 27 children were given melatonin since the daycare opened about three years ago. They thought it was a great daycare. All the kids were well-behaved. <laughs> they are some parents that have stated their children have suffered possibly from the melatonin that they've been given. Wow, Miller said. So we're still investigating that. The daycare has been closed since May 2nd. The station reports suspect accidentally pepper sprays himself during robbery in Merced. <laughs> Talk about being off your A game. A man was arrested after he accidentally pepper sprayed himself while trying to steal thousands of dollars worth of jewelry from a store, according to the Merced Police Department. Around 3.30 p.m. on Friday, officers were called out to a J.C. Penney store on Olive Avenue for a report of a robbery. When officers arrived, they found the suspect later identified as 39-year-old Stephen Stanley being held to the ground by two men who had witnessed the robbery. <laughs> okay, so if your plan is to steal thousands of dollars of jewelry from a J.C. Penny, don't do it. But second of all, pepper spray is used to keep bears out of your camping tent. <laughs> it's meant for defense, not for robberies. After speaking with the witnesses, officers say they learned that Stanley had used a hammer to break out a glass display case before grabbing several pieces of jewelry out of it after stealing the jewelry. No end game. After stealing the jewelry, officials say Stanley was confronted by two men who tried to grab a hold of him and stop him from leaving the store. Officers say Stanley began to fight back against the two men, hitting one of them with the hammer. During the fight, officers say Stanley tried to pepper spray the two men, but he accidentally sprayed it into his own eyes. <laughs> well, the two men were able to hold Stanley down until officers could arrive and place him under arrest. Officials say nobody was seriously injured during the fight. I bet not. Stanley was arrested for robbery, assault with a deadly weapon, drug charges. He had drugs too and other offenses. Fun show. Fun show. Fun show. That being said, I'm going to wrap this one up. But I'll be sure to talk to you guys very, very soon. Adios.